He was walking to school. He's complaining about the weather, and now he's going to post to an online forum. Uh, let's see. The worst thing to do, I think, is bully the child. It's important to remember that he's saying all this stuff out loud. Yeah, they're all staring at him because he's talking to himself. Okay, there's Rosa, Stella, Reed, Trish, and Fang. And now she's staring at him because he's talking to himself. So it's the next day at school. Either go and tell Nasser about the concert or I don't want to piss off the caveman. I'm going to go and tell Nasser about the concert. Principal caveman can wait. I want to apologize to Nasser about yesterday. I hope I can be nice to him this time. Great job, Anand. He saves you from soy poisoning by sacrificing his foot long, and how do you repay him? By laughing at his sister. There he is. I hope he's not too busy. I just realized, I don't know what to say to him. I wasn't laughing at your sister, I was laughing with the crowd. No, that sounds bad. Weird sisters, am I right? I might be. I just told him I'm an only son yesterday. Can't help it, dude. Some people just won't amount to anything in life. Sorry. This isn't time to be edgy, Anand. As I try and fail to find some way to explain myself to Nasser, I also fail at actually finding Nasser. How the fuck did I even end up in the yard? After what feels like a space decade of walking, or really just half an hour, I find the crippled pterodon being accosted by a very pissed off purple Said you invited all those assholes. Wait, Trish, you don't understand. Don't cut me off, you gray piece of shit. Students are clearing out of the way, just trying to get to their classes. This must be a common occurrence. The diminutive Triceratops, Trish, bows her head and charges Nasser. He just holds a hand out to her forehead. Get your hands off me! Trish, I'm not gonna fight you again. The principal's already gotten on me about the lockers from last time. Believe me, I had no idea the concert would have turned out like that. Liar! I just wanted to make sure you guys had an actual audience. What are you saying? You know what I mean, come on. Ah. She stops trying to gore Nasser and throws her arms to her sides. Screw you. Even if you weren't trying to mess with Fang, screw you. She stomps off. Wow. <sighs> what was that all about? Oh, Anon. Don't worry about it, it's nothing. You know, girl issues, right? <laughs> sure. Sounds like she was grilling you about the concert. Some concert, right? Actually, about that. I, uh... Anon Mouse, if you are not in my office within 10 minutes, I swear on my dear family, I will personally mount you on my wall. A layer of cold sweat makes its presence known. It can wait. The office is down this hall on the right. I know the way, but thanks. Nasser waves and heads off. I guess it's to the principal's office with me, again. And thinking about it makes me think about last night. You are not the only person in the world. Poor Nasser, man. He just wanted to help his sister. But it's not like he did anything wrong. Just as I reach the office, the sound of clinking glass draws my attention to the apricot ass pain and some pink raptor. Is that contraband, Reed? Bro, you've known I'm in a band for like a year now. No, contraband. In your backpack. Hmm. Nah, I left my games at home. Now me face palms, or whatever counts as a face palm with a snout. Reed, you have a bong in your backpack. But we aren't in Britain. Ugh, you're impossible. Naomi huffs and returns her focus to a stack of papers on the desk, leaving a satisfied raptor in her wake. Heh, <laughs> works every time. I need to learn how to do that. It's all about misdirection. What? 
Deuces. Yeah, so Anon said that out loud. I thought Reed was just, like, fourth wall aware, but Anon's just been talking to himself the whole time. The fuck just happened? Oh, Anon, I didn't see you there. Just in time to finish your paperwork. Paper what's it now? Go inside. Principal Spears will finalize it with you now. Paperwork? What fucking paperwork? I'm pretty sure all that stuff was finished before I even came here. Whatever. Probably a detention slip or whatever the principal has planned. You gonna stand there forever? What are you waiting for? Sit. I plant myself in one of the armchairs and sink a bit lower into the cushion than expected. Perks of being a human, I guess. I believe I told you last night to be here, first thing in the morning. Shit. Tell me, do I have a stutter? Speak? No, sir. <sighs> Take this as a learning experience, Anon. Punctuality gets you far in life. Yes, sir. I let you off the hook last night because you're a new student. I meant what I said last night. Hopefully not about the whole pile driving thing. Still, I didn't bring you in here to lecture you. He didn't? Not many people have to use the school's financial services. What? Financial services? All the paperwork's done to get you a special lunch card for the semester. You don't have to worry about paying until after graduation. No interest, no down payments, none of that. Yeah, okay, we saw this part. Naomi comes in, tinnitus, blah 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 blah, lunch card. Okay, so now, just because Anon is Fang's partner in science class, Trish needs to step in and talk to him and intimidate him. Yeah, so Trish is literally telling Anon that Fang doesn't need other friends. Like, is this what Trish does to anybody who tries to befriend Fang? Oh, this is important. So, a week later, Trish decides to get Anon's attention in math class. And then this conversation happens. As I weave through the maze of desks, squished together with partners more interested in their phones than the worksheet, I catch a hint of whatever Reed and Trish are talking about. Honesty is the best policy, eh? Bad juju to keep something bottled up. Reed grabs a hold of another chair and sits it on Trish's other side, nodding in my direction before taking a big pull from whatever he's got in that thermos on his desk. The widening of his pupils suggests it's more than just Rohrbach's cold brew in it. Hey, Anon. You guys need something? Nah, just wanted to chat a bit since we got the time. There's something in her tone of voice. It's like she's getting ready to gore me with those nubs she calls horns. Sure. I'm gonna let you two get to whatever. I'm gonna go for a refill. He shakes his thermos and heads for the door. What's in that, anyway? Don't ask. Fair enough. So there, Anon was talking out loud again, but he doesn't notice. So, Anon, you and Fang. You and Fang what? They've been talking about you. They? The tiny triceratops rolls her eyes dramatically. Fang. Fang's been talking about you. All good things, I'm sure. Fang's been talking about me? That's dumb. Oh yeah, the phones. All we've been doing is more lab work and science. Last Thursday, I tried to remember how to make a railgun. To show how I could, of course. Pfft, I could make one too. She seemed unimpressed at the time, but... Was it about making a railgun? Er, yeah, it was. What exactly are you talking about with them? Just science stuff. The railgun is just something I happen to know, though. I picked it up from an old game. Trish raises an eyebrow. Right. Why do you ask? You learned to make a deadly weapon from a video game? Her tone is flat, unlike her chest. Jeez. Don't interrupt. Why would you think that it's a good idea to make a weapon in class? How did you not get in trouble? Spears actually did talk to me. He said something about the Great Equalizer? Trish grabs the bridge of her snout. This is why men are useless. She continues to mutter to herself, all of it inco incoherent. Is there a point? She rounds back on me, anger painted clearly on her face. Look, Anon, you may be into that stuff, but leave Fang out of it. They have better things to do than, than, than to play with some man-child's lethal toys. 
Whoa, harsh. Reed slumps into the seat next to Trish, sipping on his thermos of... Just agua, bro. A thermos of water. What the... What'd I miss? I'm just trying to tell Anon here that he shouldn't be telling Fang how to make a fucking gun at school. Why not? We've been over this. We have? When? Less than five minutes ago. Thought we were talking about Anon. Yes. And specifically, we were talking about Anon's gun. Head starts to turn. Reed grins at them all. Then how about these guns? Reed places his hands on the back of his head and flexes his biceps. Trisha's face is a blur of emotions. At first confused, then fucking pissed, then aroused, then back to fucking pissed, all in the space of an atta second. Not those, the one he made with magnets. But like, how do magnets work? So that was foreshadowing. At once, all of the students giving the clock a blank stare stand to attention and file out the door. I, I, damn it, Reed. Trish punches Reed in the shoulder, gives me another evil stare, and saunters out of the room. Hey. Reed pats me on the shoulder. Bruh. <laughs> Here we go. From here on, choices matter. So they make a bet about whether or not the guitar is better than the bass in the band. So Fang goes with the guitar and the bass. Fang speaks up about how Trish is really controlling. I'm gonna stay silent. Can't guarantee their style won't be better than dog shit if I lose this challenge. Certainly can't get any worse. This is between the members of the band. In the end, majority still rules. I'm sorry, Fang, but we can't get into creative squabbles like this all the time. And you already agreed to it, right? How controlling. Fang hangs her head in defeat. I guess so. Hey man, Fang, don't let it get to you so hard. We just gotta get it out of your systems, alright? Like, you know, get it all out now so you don't have to later, yeah? Like Trish said. I never said that. Cause that's how these things work, right? You know until you don't, and then all the rest is whack. I guess. What? It's like the bigger picture. You got Fang playing bass with all of us, and they're all... Oh yeah, good thing I'm not thinking about playing other instruments, yeah, yeah. And you're all like, see, I told you so. Yeah, so we should let them play now to get it all out for later. Wait. If there were any cameras rolling, they'd be zooming in on Trisha's face. Thanks, Reed. Yeah, thanks a lot. Alright, this time we're doing... <laughs> So they play with the guitar. And now Fang is playing guitar. Naomi is annoying. <laughs> Specifically, she's annoying about whether or not Anon should take gardening club as an extracurricular. She's just trying to push him closer to Fang. Okay, so Fang is okay with letting Anon hang out in the auditorium because he's trying to avoid Naomi, and everybody in the auditorium hates Naomi. Okay, this poster is really funny. Besides the uh, graphic design is my passion aspect to it, Trish misspelled the name of their band. Okay, so Anon is struggling with a music test. Leave Fang alone. Guess that settles it. Fang wouldn't want to be bothered right now anyways. Looking back to my paper, I try once again to make sense of the questions in music notes. Write the following notes in both treble and bass clef. What? Yo, you should have like, asked Fang for help, man. I have to grab the desk to keep myself from falling out of my chair. 
Reed, what the fuck are you doing here? Just getting an absent note signed by Teach Man. And what's with the outfit? Reed is in an overly large inflatable T-Rex costume. School mascots are pretty cool. You wouldn't believe the things they let you do with these. I'm not gonna ask for clarification. But, uh, you should get some help or something. I'll ask the teacher for you. No, Reed, you don't have to. Yo, teach! This guy needs some extra help! All eyes turn to us. The desk makes a nice conk sound when my head hits it. Does he really? Uh, someone... Fang, you help him with the packet? Fang glares daggers at the two of us. Thanks, Reed. Hey, no problem, man. I gotta go. Reed shuffles over to the teacher's desk in the corner to get his signature. Fang calls out from her chair. I'm not getting up. If you need help, grab your stuff and get over here. Also, am I wrong for interpreting uh, Rosa and Stella as being a couple? Because it definitely seems like they are. But they could also just be really close friends. I don't know. You can thank Naomi that you got off with campus beautification. She was quite adamant that it would be more constructive than homeroom detention. So Naomi's pulling strings in the background to put Anon and Fang in situations where they're together. Yeah, so Anon and Fang start talking about, like, philosophy and political ideology. And Fang talks about how most people are probably worthless, which is not a good sign. That's a huge red flag. I feel anxious as Fang continues watching me. I watch it happen, as if in slow motion, as comprehension dawns on Fang. Her voice is low. Accusatory. You were at the show? My heart stops. There it is. I couldn't have hoped to hide it forever. Fang stands over me, her wings spread wide and her shoulders shaking. I... how do I explain this? We're close enough friends now, right? I could probably even joke about it a bit. Joking is a good way to move past mistakes. Explain it to her honestly. Joking is a good way to move past mistakes. We're good enough friends now, right? This'll be fine. I know that you guys sounded so bad, you never made it past your intro. Her eyes narrow. Maybe if I... I was expecting dinner and a show, not a comedy skit. I know I'm not the best comedian, but still nothing. No, wait, I think I hear some cracking. Oh, that'd be her knuckles popping. Fang's face twists into a sneer, and her hand slowly comes up into a fist. I may have overestimated my comedic talents, or our friendship. My head snaps to the side, a burning sting radiating from my cheek. My foot catches on the pile of discarded gardening tools. The world spins, and I land on my ass, where we were weeding. At least something broke my fall. Wait, isn't this the flower bed? You fucking asshole. Fang storms off, shouldering past Rosa, who is stunned silent. Rosa isn't stunned for long, though, and suddenly an orange terror descends upon me like I set off some sort of alarm. So Anand goes to get Fang at the parking lot. So Fang is trying to break into one of the teacher's cars. So Anon has four extra hours of detention. So Anon's hanging out with Fang's band at lunch and after school. He's still falling all the time over everything. Okay, this is also neat. The projector just got fixed. They ask, what do you want to watch? And Trish wants to watch The Count of Monte Cristo. And I believe that's a story about a dude who goes to great extremes to get really sadistic vengeance on someone. Which is kind of what Trish ends up doing. Oh yeah, here we go. Fang isn't in music class. This is when this is the rooftop scene where I need to interrupt constantly. It's coming up. So he finds her on the roof. Preening, which is basically like an avian version of self-harm. Interrupt. She seems at a loss for words. I should say something. You're feeling helpless, right? Like you don't matter? Fang looks at me with desperation. Y yes Here's what I think. I put my arm on Fang's shoulder. You're in a pretty bad spot right now. 
Self-improvement is hard, but there's nothing to be gained without sacrifice, right? Fang gives a slight nod. You need to step out from your comfort zone more often, even if you think there's no time. There's no harm in diversifying, right? Fang looks away from the coastline and to me. I don't know, maybe you're right. You could also try harder to get along with Nasser. I guarantee there's not that much in the way between you two. You'll still be there to support me, right? Sure. I don't know if I'm strong enough to do all that. I believe you can be. Being weak is nothing to be ashamed of. Staying weak is. You don't have to do it alone. Fang embraces me tight. Thank you. We sit in silence for a few minutes. Eventually, she lets go. Feng's breathing is evening out, and she looks far more composed now. Hey, can I see that? Feng points at my oversized hall pass. Yeah, sure. The rhythm is slow, and the tone is soft, enough that her humming blends in perfectly with it. With a meteor coming soon, everyone's going to die. So I'll say to everyone, goodbye, Volcano High. Principal Spears comes out, throws the door, which makes a huge hole in the fence that's to stop people from jumping off the roof. He comes up onto the roof and yells at them for ditching class. Anon arrives at Fang's house. Fang comes downstairs to meet up with Anon so they can go looking for a venue. Then Fang's dad strong arms Nasser and Naomi into going along for supervision. Are my feelings for Fang also just a tool for Naomi? What do I even do here? So I'm going to excuse myself. I need to get away from here. Fast. I actually need to use the bathroom myself now. Oh, sure, we'll be here. I soullessly start dragging my feet away from Naomi. And on, wait. I freeze in place. Fair warning, watch the ceiling. I sense great tragedy in those words. Whatever, I don't want to be here. The public restroom looks clean enough from the outside, but I can see through the open doors that it gets cleaned maybe once a week. I'm not here to use the restroom anyways. If I'm right, I just need to look behind the building and... Jackpot. Fang is resting on the wall with a half-finished cigarette between her fingers. Got a spare? She shrugs half-heartedly, holding out the half-smoked sin stick to me. I hesitate. Fang tilts her head. Before she can pull her hand back, I accept the smoke. The cherry at the end burns dimly as I tap off the ash. It's not an indirect kiss or anything like that, I chant as a mantra. The drag is smooth, with a hint of mint to it. The smoke exhaled is wispy, and I can feel my skin prickle. I don't know whether it's because of the nicotine or whose lips I tasted. She doesn't have lips. Fuck. Thanks. I hand her back the cigarette. Fang's tail drums a steady rhythm on the wall as she takes one last long drag. She blows out a heavier cloud and drops the stump on the ground. I stamp out the stub before she can, giving it a solid twist before kicking the dead end into the grass. How'd you find me? Where else would you be? She gives a brief shrug. Anyways, we could probably get away with ditching Nasser and Naomi. How'd you manage that? Secret family technique? Psh. Suddenly, an image of Fang's dad pops in my mind, and I realize I probably shouldn't be seen alone with her behind a public restroom. Under penalty of, holy shit, my spleen is outside my body. Let's get out of here. Alright, let's get a move on. The two of us peek from behind the building to make sure the coast is clear of any brothers or scheming persimmon piranhas. The coast is clear. I think I know where to look. Please tell me it's not in the shitty promenade place. Nah, it's in Little True. Where? Little Trudon. It's near enough that we can walk there. Why didn't you mention it before? Naomi? Ah. The two of us sprint conspicuously across the park to the nearest cover in the concrete jungle. So they bond over their issues with their parents. Mo assumes that they're dating. Anon talks about needing a venue for the band. Mo explains about support. 
Okay, so Nasser has absolutely no reaction to the fact that Anon and Fang just ran off together. Inverted Empress. You need to be wary about future negligence, Anon. The fuck does that mean? Uh, er, gotta go, nature calls, see you at the show. She flees in denim, hissing fear. Well then, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I step up to the stage to see the band's point of view. And then promptly trip. Fix the cables. It could be a serious hazard if I leave them like this. Like a fire hazard or something, I think. I'll just put them all on one of Moe's surge protectors. And done. Now that's taken care of, I glance at the pizza-themed clock on the wall. 30 minutes until the show starts. As if right on cue, half the lights on stage cut out. Trish strummed silently before giving a confused glance to the speakers. Tuesday? Fang fell out of tempo with Reed's drums, stumbling over the end of the song. It's silent. I began to clap, followed by several other patrons. Including Stella, who looks seconds away from being curved stomped. Rose is on the other side of the room, too entranced by the music to care. My eyes scanned the room before noticing Trish, the sheer vehement rage radiating from her visibly distorting the air around her. Fuck. My jaw aches as I picture myself in Stella's place, courtesy of one pissed off woman lit. Before I have the chance to escape, I hear my one saving grace. Anon, Fang reaches me before Trish leaves the stage, extending her hand for a high five. We did it! No thanks to that, asshole! Oh no. What's wrong? Skinny sabotaged the show. I told him not to touch the wires and look what happened. I was only trying to help. Trish holds up her hand to my face, waving the other around in grand gestures. You ruined the big finale. We missed our chance to make it big. Why is it that only my base cut out anyways? Are you actively trying to ruin us? I told you Reed knew what he was doing. Did you not trust him and I? Tears trickled down her sweat-glazed face. Is Fang really the only one here you care about? We exist too, you know. This hypocritical bitch. The sharp words cut right through me. Jeez, Trish, the show went great. Our first good concert. The crowd actually clapped this time. No thanks to him. I didn't do it on purpose. Even though you deserved it. Before she could interrogate me further, Fang grabbed Trish on the arm. Trish, didn't you say you wanted to set up our merch? Trish winces, then gives a begrudging sigh, lowering her accusatory finger. Ugh, you aren't worth it. Trish storms off, leaving Fang and I alone. And Reed, who was listening the entire time. Anon, dude, you really should trust others, you know? It's like they say, trust is the building block of our economy, or something. Yeah, Reed, that's really funny to have you talking about trust. What? There are two kinds of people in this world, bro. People who believe, and people who trust. And you believed in something false, your impulsiveness. Before I can begin to comprehend Reed's capitalist sermon, my ears are assaulted by very Italian yelling. Hey, kids! So here, Trish is poking around, trying to get information about Anand's past that she can use against him. Fang invites Anon back to their house to study... The correct thing to do is not study. So I'm going to get to studying, which we've seen this scene already, so I'm going to skip over it mostly. Naomi begins doing her presentation. Anon zones out but pays attention to the pictures. And then his own personal images start showing up. So everybody runs off after Trish. Okay, so now Reed is trying to ask Anon to, like, consider that Trish might have had a reason for doing what she did. And so I'm going to say I'm going to refuse to accept that I had any part to play in this debacle other than being the vi a victim. Ignore Trish. No, I've got nothing. Spear sighs like he expected me to add something more. What was I supposed to say? Forgive her and act like nothing happened? Well, Anon, I can't really say I blame you after all of that. Trish remains silent, her eyes locked on the floor. You can go home for the day if you need to. Right before I clamp my hand on the doorknob, Spear speaks up. Oh, and Anon, don't think I didn't notice. 
Your waifu is trash and your taste is shit. Alright, sure, let's get out of here. Reed lets out another heavy sigh. Gonna stick around, try and talk with Trish and all. Reed, I... I'm taking a break from the band. Reed's expression shifts to one of sadness and shock. I just need time to think, alright? Like, you know that'll crush Trish, but I can't really stop you if you think it's right, dude, taking a breather and all. Thanks, Reed. Reed offers a weak smile as we turn away from the principal's office. See ya, space cowboy. Wait, did he just... God damn it, Reed. We make our way to the front of the school as I mentally prepare myself for what's coming. Time for the walk of shame. And he goes down the stairs. And she puts Icy Hot on his bruises. The next day, Fang and Anon just stay home. The day after that, Anon goes back to school. So Nasser physically confronts Anon about where his sister is. So Nasser invites Anon to come and talk in the auditorium. I shouldn't have pushed you earlier. Sorry, it was a moment of weakness. Don't worry about it, I can take a hit or two. He silently nods. Yeah, man, sure. He nervously chuckles. Look, Anon. When you told me Fang could kiss you because you told her your feelings, I can't really describe it. Don't take it the wrong way, but my mind just screamed at me. Worst case scenario. I don't follow. Like, uh, I told you a while back how I can't do anything to help my sister. That frustration has just been getting worse. I'm not even sure it's anything wrong with Fang at this point. Like, it might be me getting upset over what I don't understand. Something like that. I wouldn't worry too much about Fang. She tells me she's fine. She might come back to school tomorrow, even. She bounces back well. Still a bit on edge about everything, though. But that's her business, right? Sure. I still just can't shake the feeling. I just can't find the right words. Does Fang and I going out bother you that much? It's not that exactly, but... But? I'm lost. Is he asking me to say something for him? That's dumb. I'm not a mind reader. Er, I mean... Uh. Well, if that's all, I'm gonna leave. I have homework and stuff to do. Nasser sighs. Yeah, sure, sorry. Text me if you figure it out, I guess. Yeah, see you. Nasser looks back ahead at the curtains and doesn't get up to follow me out of the auditorium. I fish the key from my backpack and unlock my door. My place is as drab as ever, and Fang is laying on my bed, paying close attention to whatever she's doing on her phone. She looks like she hasn't slept in days. How long has she been on her phone? Yo, I'm home. You feeling any better? The loud sound of chewing and a thumb up was a good enough reply. You didn't really miss anything today. Mr. Fernsworth basically gave everyone the day off. She finally finishes whatever she raided from my fridge with a massive gulp. Ah, uh, nice. So no homework to catch up on. So, uh... Come on, Anon. Relationships shouldn't be this hard. What have you been doing? Nothing. Oh. Ate all your salami? Tried playing a game, but I don't know your password? Thank fuck she didn't see any Saturnia. My bad. I guess it slipped my mind to give it to you. What else can I... Oh, and Nasser wanted me to meet him. Fang looks up from her phone. He did? Why? And he ended up just mumbling a lot about the two of us, so I left. Ugh, what a weirdo. Can he stop getting into my business for, like, a week? Sickos. Him and Naomi. I sit on the bed next to Fang. Hey, forget about them. How about we actually do something fun now? Sure, like what? We could play some party games or something. Oh. Can be something else if you want. I just thought you were going to say we should go out somewhere or something. Eh, I'm trying to save money for a new game that comes out in a few weeks, so... That's alright. Got anything you want to play in mind? No, I'm fine watching. Still have a lot to think about, you know? I get the feeling I just stuck my foot in my mouth. Or maybe she's just not telling me something? Not really my place to pry. If you say so. I load up Towervania, Melody of Melancholy, and Fang's phone buzzes. Oh, snap. Something happened. I gotta go. Someone get hurt? No, nothing that serious, but I should still be going. 
Don't want to overstay my welcome here and all. Oh, right. The fan gives a quick hug goodbye and waves as she goes out the door. I return my attention to the game and end up playing until nightfall. 